Be sure to like and subscribe to Inferno Coon, or else Clementine gets it. Hello everyone and welcome, it's Inferno Kun here with a very very special video, an interview with the one and only voice of Lily in The Walking Dead, the final season, Nikki Rap. Go ahead and say hello to the people. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Nikki, how's it going? <laughs> yes, as I said, she is the voice of Lily, she, she's happy to be here and I'm really happy to have her here as well. It thank you be. so much for asking me to do this it's awesome yes. thank you for accepting it it's <laughs> kind of crazy because i'm not that big of a channel and i'm not that big of a person but you know it's my first time interviewing somebody so oh that's so rad all right cool <laughs> all that's right. rad all so, right great let's go ahead and start with some questions that i want to know regarding like voicing as well how did you get started in in voice acting um well you know, growing up, everyone always made fun of my voice because I always sounded really young. Mm -hmm. And I always did a lot of theater growing up. And that kind of evolved to me to go to drama school. And I did all kinds of roles and they didn't limit me to anything. And then right before graduation, they were they said to me, you probably won't work very much because of your voice. And I was pretty devastated because I was like, well, what the heck have I been doing? I'm about to graduate now. I'm like, I'm taking everything so seriously. You know, I'm about to go out into the world with this, this stuff I've just learned. And one of the teachers said, you know, have you thought about voice acting? And I was like, no, because everyone made fun of me. But at this time, Animaniacs was on mm -hmm. and I would literally go home from school and do my homework so I could watch Animaniacs. <laughs> And I, I loved it, and I related to Tress McNeil and, her, and Dot so much. And it just kind of sparked something in me. And so that's when I first started thinking maybe it was something I could do. So anyway, long story short, <laughs> I uh, moved back home to San Francisco Bay Area, and I went to a voiceover school called Voice Tracks. I took a class there, and I just instantly fell in love with voice acting. And I have learned that... I've not been limited at all. I I mean, honestly, regarding Lily in The Walking Dead, mm -hmm. I would never have expected to play a role like that. Because even at conventions, when people come up to meet me, they think I'm Clementine, first of all, <laughs> because I do sound young. And and then they're like, you don't sound like the character. And I'm like, well, it's I'm acting. I was voice acting, and I've learned how to find different nuances in my voice. And... Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's become this really cool thing because most of my career I was playing lots of cute little characters and, and teenagers and, you know, stuff for toys. Mm -hmm. And I was in The Sims for 12 years. I played the eight-year-old kids. So mm -hmm. it's, I don't know. Anyway, I just went off a tangent. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's definitely a really, really, really interesting story. Yeah, so anyway, the point is I went to, to voiceover school and... You know, that I think people always ask me, how do you do it? How, what do I need to do? And it's acting classes and it's, 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 you can have a great voice, but you have to know how to, what to do with your voice and how to communicate through the voice to the world. I don't mm -hmm. know. It sounds cheesy, but anyway, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty cool and it happened and it worked out and I'm glad it's working out. Oh uh, yes. Like, I think you're uh, just an amazing voice actress and it's really, really great. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, but um, as far as getting into The Walking Dead, what was your, your thoughts going into like getting the role as Lily in like The Walking Dead, a big IP like that? Well, uh, you know, I Walking Dead was my the third game I did with Telltale because I did um, Tales of Monkey Island. Mm -hmm. I was Morgan LaFlay, and then I did Sam and Max. I was Sam and Mac, and then uh, Walking Dead came along, and... When I got the audition, I just did not, I was like, I would never get cast. Like I was just saying, I would never get cast as a role like this. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I just was having a really bad day. I was angry at the world. Something bad happened, it pissed me off. And I was just mad. And um, I don't know, it fit that day. It was like the mm -hmm. day to get that audition because Lily was so angry. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of cussing and and I don't know, I, there was just, I grounded myself into how I was feeling and I did have a picture of what she looked like. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we don't get a photograph or any kind of rendering of the character. So you just kind of have to jump in, but I don't know. I don't know. It was just, I was, it was pretty incredible to uh, have that. And then I had to 
re-auditioned for it. I kept getting called back for it. I think mm -hmm. I reread for it three times. And then finally they were like, you got it. And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but it's in Walking Dead, the TV show was still really new at that time. Yeah. Like it was like a year old or something maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it was that much, but um, it wasn't that huge of a thing. And it, it was the beginning of something for sure. And oh, yeah. then... Once the game came out, we were like, whoa, this is really something. This is kind of a phenomenon. Like, mm -hmm. it be, it blew in that season one blew in up into something that was just so magical and beautiful. And uh, the everybody connects with it, like all ages of people. I was just in London at Walker Stalker over the weekend, and it was just incredible. People are so emotional and so yeah. enraptured by it, you know? Mm -hmm, yeah. So, yeah, it's it it just grew into something I don't think any of us expected really. Yeah, that's how I that's how I feel, you know, like having you be a part of something that was like, you know, in the making and then it like going to be big and you're like, "Well, okay, I was a part of this. That's pretty awesome." But I'm glad you yeah. mentioned the um the whole like actually seeing her like seeing Lily as a character, seeing a, a render of her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how does that like affect like as far as recording uh voice lines, do you just look at a script and just do off imagination or do they actually provide some kind of visual representation? Um well when I went in for my first session back as Lily last May, um, I finally saw a picture of what she looks like now. Mm -hmm. Um and it was I thought she looked really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and, and no, but we just get, there's just like a, a copy, a picture of her, and mm -hmm. it was just by, it was in the booth, so that's how I saw it, and, um, but then they just have the iPad with, I don't see anything until I go in there, and I remember that first session because we had the iPad, and it's basically cold reading, we're just going down reading each line three times or so, mm -hmm. and you're just going line by line, and progressively, as I was recording these lines, I was just, oh my gosh, people are going to hate me. Like, <laughs> like hate me. I already got so much hate because of season one, which I don't think even makes sense. I understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she, but, but there were things, there were circumstances to her behavior and I'm not excusing it, but I don't think she was a completely horrible person in season one mm -hmm. that, that a lot of people create her to be. I don't think she was a villain. I don't at all. I'm going off on another tangent. Well, that, was, <laughs> that was one of my questions I had. Um, was like, I, I personally liked Lily as a character, like in season one, because she was she was so complex. Yes, she was a little bit aggressive in trying to yeah. convey her point, but she yeah. had good intentions, and she that was that, that's the grounds of like a good character for me. And I really did like uh, her as far as that goes. So yeah, what I had with that question was. What did you think pretty much going from, you know, season one Lily, who was like, you know, of course, aggressive and kind of, you know, good with her intentions to the Lily in the final season that was like, just uh, kind of mean? I was shocked and uh, I was just very shocked because it kept getting worse and worse. <laughs> and and it kind of broke my heart a little bit just because. I just wanted her to have some kind of redemption, but and that's why I feel like we need to know what happened to her in mm -hmm. that middle time. Don't you want to know? <laughs> yes, like I would, I would definitely love some kind of like episode that like went into certain characters who were missing or something like that, including Lily. Yeah, yeah. I want to know why, how, because she really, she really went off the deep end. In, I mean, she was so. It's just really horrible, really evil. And, but at the same time, she still had a vulnerability to her because, you know, she wanted to take care of people still. It's just her, she was so misguided. Mm -hmm. And she ended up losing everybody again. It's yeah. really sad. It's really sad. Yeah, it's like a, a bunch of things that I feel like they wanted to go ahead and like go into because I believe at the um, end season or in episode four, she was kind of like, oh, my people will end up dying because I don't have you people. And she was very emotional about that. Yeah, yeah. So there has to be, like, something going on there. Do you think that, you know, like, how much do you think Lily actually cares about her people that are at the, the Delta? I think she does care. I just think, you know, they have to follow her. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, she is the boss, and what she says goes. And I don't, I, I don't want to say it's like they're just a bunch of like sheep or something, but I guess you know, in the apocalypse, it's good to have a leader. It's good to have someone who's in control, who's fierce, mm-hmm. and doesn't take shit. And uh, you know, I still am always gonna every character I play, I want to try to find something good about them, something that I and I do care about Lily, and I. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm always going to have, like, a soft spot. Like, I'm so glad she got a chance to come back, even though she's, she just really is uh, just really wrecked inside her head. But, but I mean, <laughs> but I'm glad that she had a chance to come back. And uh, I don't know. I just, I want to know. Like, I personally have my ideas. I mm-hmm. always knew she was surviving in my head. But then I gave hope. I gave up hope that she was ever going to come back, honestly. Like, after mm-hmm. a few years, I'm like, it's over. It's not going to happen. So, you know, I, but I always believed in my heart she was out leading a group and I still, and the fact that there's still that possibility in some people's stories that she's out there, you know, did yeah. I just say a spoiler? Should I have not have said that? No, everything's perfectly fine here. I'm pretty sure everybody okay. <laughs> with already played it. Yeah. Yeah. I just, so many times at the cons though, people hadn't played, you know, mm-hmm. especially in Germany and, and. I felt terrible because so many people hadn't played it at all yet. And I mm-hmm. was just, because I, I have new pictures of Lily and the, we have new art with Lily. And uh, no. I put a lot of content up that's like pretty fast. So I'm pretty sure everyone who like would want to not get spoiled would not, not be here, I guess. Yeah, but, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So you mentioned, um, of course, uh, you giving up hope that she would ever return back in the series at all. As far as that goes, like when she ended up leaving in season one, how how do you feel about her just either getting left or her actually taking RV and going away in season one? Well, honestly, I was shocked she was gone that soon from this from season one. Mm-hmm. I thought that she was going to be in the story a lot longer than she was. Um, it just kind of felt abrupt because all of a sudden I went in for my recording session and they're like okay well this is your last episode and I was just wait what <laughs> <laughs> you know I was really disappointed um yeah I just uh, it's is hard with Lily because she she really can't be trusted <laughs> <laughs> she just can't I mean if you if you didn't leave her by the side of the road then she just totally screws you over it's yeah. like you know, and the same thing that happened in episode three of season four. It was like, you know, it's just she could not be trusted at all. I just, it makes me sad. But she, something in her just, she's, she's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I felt like because of that, she has like a lot that, you know, is going on in her head. And I would love to like understand like what's going through her mind. And I think personally, you know, playing as Lily in an episode mm-hmm. going about, you know, what happened to her, maybe even like if you play as her going back to the Delta, for example, yeah. will open up a lot of thoughts because um, I remember seeing a bunch of articles about um, from Kent Muddle, the uh, creative director, I believe, saying why she's doing this because she's in some kind of deep situation. And I'd love to know, like, what exactly is going through her head? Me too. Me too. I would, I, there's just, I think she's too awesome of a character. And honestly, I'm grateful that I got the opportunity to come back and, and voice her again. But uh, now I just want more. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, like I do because I, it sounds so crazy because she's so evil. And, but I just was savoring it. I just, mm-hmm. there was something about getting to just, go there as her like I don't mm-hmm. even know how to describe it but it just it's and then when I was watching I think your playthrough mm-hmm. and I you know that whole scene with Minnie and and when they're locked up and I was yeah. like I was kind of freaked myself out <laughs> because <laughs> I and because also I hadn't heard it like I recorded it months and months and months before it even came out it was like five six months or something Mm -hmm. so i i don't know it was just crazy to i really creeped myself out it was i was like oh my god lily you're horrible oh my god (laughs) 
<laughs> but man, I loved it. It was so fun. That's really good that she's able to to spark that kind of uh, reaction from you, being able to play her. Really yeah, cool. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really honored that I've gotten to be a part of Telltale's history and to get to be to make a comeback. Though I mean, in their final game, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's something really kind of symbolic about that, and you know, I'm fort- I feel fortunate that I've gotten to work with a lot of people there. And, it was some amazing people that are going to go on and do even more amazing things in better places for their hearts and minds and souls and everything. So I hope. Initially, whenever you were, of course, giving up hope that Lily would ever return, what was it like getting a phone call? I don't know what, what kind of communication you got to like say, hey, we want you back as Lily. How, how was that? Well, I was at my job and I had just finished... And uh, I checked my email. It was an email. And it was just very <laughs> nonchalant. It was like, hey, we want to check your availability to come back as Lily. Or Telltale wants to bring you back as Lily in The Walking Dead. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and I, um, I read it like a bunch of times. I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't say anything. <laughs> and I was just. I was over the moon. I could not believe it. I couldn't believe it. And um, it just, it was, and it happened fast. Like they wanted me like the next week. Mm. And I was going up to San Francisco for San Francisco Comic Con. And it just so happened, it was on Friday afternoon. So I just left the con, took the train across the bay, went and did my session and went back (laughs) to the con. It was so great. you know, and to just, yeah, it was great. And I remember, you know, I got back on the train and just that feeling like, oh my gosh, she is back. <laughs> <laughs> She's back. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because us fans, we really wanted like somebody could come back. Like, of course, Lily could have been, you know, Krista, somebody to come back. Yeah. And I think out of everybody, I really wanted Lily to come back. And to see her come back was just like, yo, that's crazy. <laughs> I know it. it was nuts. It was so nuts. Yeah. So uh, as far as as far as Lily, her her little final moments goes um, in episode either three or four, she can become determined. Yeah. She can die. She can or she can survive. Yeah. What do you think about you know her being determined? You know, I didn't know uh, that was gonna happen. <laughs> um, I left that session thinking, oh, she's still alive. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a death scene. I didn't see anything about that happening. (laughs) So I didn't know. And when we, did you get to see the thing that uh, Melissa and I did on uh, Twitch with Skybounds like in January? Yes, I did. Yeah, so like, you know, they were playing and it was, uh, that's, I mean, yeah, so you shoot her, shoot her eye out. You shoot her in mm-hmm. the head. I was, I was pretty upset. Like, <laughs> I yeah. was pretty upset. I was pretty upset. And I mean, I, and then it's like, oh wow, look what you just did to AJ. Now, now he's just a crazy malicious killer. Mm-hmm. That was so upsetting. Yeah, I just didn't know that was gonna happen. And I always thought if Lily came back, she would have gotten some like badass <laughs> death scene, like. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it would be more than that, but it was shocking to me. And yeah, I just didn't know that was going to happen. And I met a lot of people, though, in mm-hmm. London, especially. It was very sweet. They said they couldn't kill Lily because they knew me. <laughs> and I was like, that's really sweet. <laughs> yeah, <'cause... laughs> but she can't be trusted. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt, too, because I went to um, the Walker Con in Atlanta. So I met you then. And then the episode came out. I'm like, oh, what did yeah. I do? I, I love Nikki. She's great. Ah! I love the character. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. So I, oh, I ended you. up sparing her, of course, uh, hoping uh, that she could be redeemed. Yeah, I think a lot of people felt that way. But yeah, it's, it's not. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of like wondering, you know, like what could have been if she... If she had, like, what would she have done if she, you know, um, came back later on in episode four? Like, what would happen? Where would she go? What's her plans next? You know, I, I think number one above everything else is Lily has proven that she is a survivor. And I also think she thrives on it. 
I want to know what happened to her in, in between the times, you know, after she left the group or they left her. But, you know, I, I, I just all, I don't know. I don't think she's ever going to go down easy. And mm -hmm. I just feel like she's one of those like leaders. She's going to bully her way to the top or just take control but she also knows what she's doing. It's just she's so her head is just so messed up now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Like, what do you think? I personally think there was um there was something about Lily that you know you can see that okay she's all messed up now. She's kind of evil, well, not kind of mostly evil. And then yeah. But when it came to at one point in the episode, I think it was episode two, where she comes up to Clementine with the gun, and then you can go ahead and say. We were family once and she like, yeah. you know, stops and frowns and she's kind of sad. So that made me yeah. wonder, you know, okay, she could possibly be redeemed. She possibly may feel some regret. So, uh, well, I think at the, that final scene, you know, when she's out on the raft, mm -hmm. she definitely is feeling that. That was very yeah. emotional because I, for me, I knew that was it. That was my first day. Also, I was so sick. I mm -hmm. had no voice even the day before. Oh. I was freaking out. Please let me have a voice tomorrow. Please let me. But I think it worked uh, because of the smoke. And it was emotional, though. It was just very emotional. Everything Lily was saying was, you know, she just wanted to take care of the people she loved. And, and, and you know, nothing lasts. But it was just, it was so bittersweet. It was just, she wants love, but she doesn't want it. And she wants to care, but she feels like she can't care. Mm -hmm. And she's lost everything again. Yeah. And now she's going off into the dark on a piece of wood with a stick. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's sad. I just, it made me so sad. And it just was all of a sudden, it was so, it was just all of a sudden they, they like had this conversation where they're yelling and then all of a sudden she just goes away. And I was just, mm -hmm. it just made me sad. Did you think that was sad? Yeah, because like I was kind of mad at her for like, you know, because like, I trusted her. I was like, okay, I can kind of forgive you at this point. You can stop this and we can go on about our business. But then she ended up yeah. stabbing James and I was like, okay, look, <laughs> I yeah. tried with you. And then she comes along and she's all sad and stuff. Like, yeah. you you did this. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it was, she, she's, she's complicated, man. She's like... <laughs> She is, but at the same time, the basis, she does, I think she does want to have a family surrounding her. She had a shitty family growing up, and now we learned more about that. And, you know, it's, she's, there's a lot, and, and Larry was so, such a terrible influence on her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just Lily, she had it tough. Yeah. I'm not excusing any of her mm -hmm. behavior, but something made her even dive deeper into the darkness. Mm -hmm. And she really, she just really went there. She's just, she like embraced it. And it's, I was just glad I didn't have to act out the scene where Lily was cutting his tongue out. Like, <laughs> Oh yeah, that, that would have been. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I went in there like, yeah, so Lily has just cut Lewis's tongue out. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I didn't have to do that. But <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's complicated. Do you think that she would have, you know, um, after going off on the raft, you think she would have went back to her people or, you know, what would she have done then? What would you think? I think she would try to go back and see what what she can salvage. And I don't know. I mean, probably mm -hmm. collect people along the way. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? Yeah, because, like, at that point, she, she lost, you know, all of her crew, pretty much. All of her crew. Yeah. And she's going back to her people to say, hey, look, I failed this mission. And that'd be kind of... Mm. Yeah, that would be bad. I don't know. Maybe she'll just... Well, she loves running away from stuff. Mm -hmm. So, maybe she won't. Maybe she... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. If she goes back, she's screwed. Yeah. We need to know. That's why I'd love to like have like a DLC that's like, you know, of course she determined it. Just have like you know two separate episodes, like one where yeah. it's, one where it's Lily, one where it's James. That sounds like a good yeah. idea. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I just want to see. I would. I just love to see you know more about Lily and you know what exactly she went through during that time period through season one and season four. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe afterwards, because there's a lot of information that you know. They left out so much because, you know, her her people being in a war and wanting to kidnap everybody. There's a lot yep. to go on with that. 
Yeah, and I thought there was going to be more... I thought it was going to be some big showdown between Lily and Whispers or something. Like, I thought there was going to be something more... Like, I was excited about that prospect, but it was just kind of like... Yeah, it was not at all. Yeah, leave stuff open. I remember seeing, of course, I read, like, a bunch of a bunch of stuff from Kent uh, about the, you know, plans and stuff. And he said that uh, having, like, some kind of, like, big, like, Clementine going up against the Delta would be, like, a bit insane. And, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't yeah, have yeah. it, though. <laughs> That would have been crazy. It would have been crazy. After all of this, how would you describe Lily from beginning season one to the end? Let's say she survives. Hmm. You know, I think at the basis of Lily, she does want to do the best she can for the group she's with, whoever she's leading, whether that's good or bad. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, when I look at how she was in season one and her attitude and the way her father, her father's attitude was, and then she also had the stress of taking care of him and we all know how that went down. And mm -hmm. so after that happens, there was something that, that went a little wonky and then, you know, everyone was just not listening to her. And she was right about a lot of stuff. And, like, people just did not like her because she was strong and she was bossy. And I get that. And mm -hmm. she didn't go about doing things the right way. You know, then you fast forward all these years later. And she's clearly got a grasp on these people. Mm -hmm. That, you know, th I mean, she is their leader. There's no question. There's no one else trying to compete with her, yeah. at least there, you know, to be the leader. And it was like she rose up in power. It was like she she was just had these horrible things happen to her. She had nothing. She had to basically rebuild her life. But she's still haunted by the past of all this stuff that happened with her first family out there, you know? Mm-hmm. I think it's still, there's that, I think that's what it is. You know, you see in her face and that she is affected by these things. When Lee is mentioned, when mm -hmm. any, you know, any of that stuff, you can tell she's in there still. But her evolution just, it was like she came out of her shell, but not necessarily in a positive light. Mm -hmm. But she became someone who is everything to those people. No, it, I mean, she was, I don't know. In the, in the original group, it was just, everyone hated her. Yeah. You know, they hated her. When I when I go back and watch certain things, there was, I saw a couple of good um, YouTube videos where a couple of people had done compilations of scenes from season one and season four of Lily. And mm -hmm. it was just, I wish I could remember who they were right now, but, um, it was so interesting and just to see what happened. But I, but there's that whole chunk where just something, you know, it had to be more. Not that what didn't happen or was terrible enough, but like, and I know what she did to other people. But when your father's head is smashed on you and you're trying to save his life, mm -hmm. I don't know how you really recover from that ever. It's going to make you a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And she just, she just ran with it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know, she became like this rabid, crazy creature out surviving and convincing people to listen to her. You know, yeah. she she's very she was getting people like, yeah. Yeah, that's why I feel like I could probably argue that she's like maybe possibly one of like the best characters throughout this series because of how like I think I, I really, really, really did love her development in season one. It made sense. And you can see where she's coming from. Well, yeah, least. yeah. So I mean, I'm not sure. Um, I think that season four definitely delved into that a little bit more, and I mm -hmm. did like it. And seeing how what may have become of her in that season was definitely really, really great. Yeah. But you know, um, as far as like her dad dying, pretty much. What do you think the the new Lily would do if she saw Kenny again? Oh, oh God! Yeah. I think Kenny needs to run. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think she would be able to. She would not be able to contain. Oh man! I don't think that. I just don't think. I don't think she would rationally handle that well at all. 
Mm-hmm. And she would know it's him. Like, she would know it was Kenny. And, of course, he would have to say some snarky remark. You know, it just wouldn't be good. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like in, in season one, she kind of tolerated it. She was like, man, she I really did. don't like Kenny, but, you know, got to learn, learn to coexist here. But, you yeah. know, I feel like in but the final now, season, she doesn't care anymore. She no, she wouldn't. doesn't care <laughs> at all. She would not be cool at all. There would be no fun reunions there. Here, have some extra beef jerky. No. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. So, as far as that goes, um, that's pretty much all the questions that I really have as of right now. Anything you want to add? <laughs> wow. I don't know. I think I said a lot on my rambling tangents. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry I do that. I just like one thing leads to another. Did it make sense what I was yes, saying? Yes, it was it was very insightful and you really you can see how passionate you are about the character and it. it's really great to see. <laughs> oh, great, great. Thank you. Well, I am. I'm just uh I'm just really glad this all happened. I'm sorry that there was, you know, the whole thing with Telltale and then I know people were so emotional about all of that and it was really a tough it was a tough time and for me personally I was I was just like oh my god I just got back in this game and now it's not gonna happen Mm -hmm. I just on a selfish note I felt bad that I was like thinking about myself when everyone at Telltale was losing their livelihoods but I mean for me this was just a really big deal too and it's all relative but it's just everybody had their there are moments of like, oh my goodness, this is devastating. And um, you know, I just want to say again, I'm extremely grateful to Skybound. Mm-hmm. You know, I always would see their booth at uh, at Walker Stalkers and and sometimes just other conventions I'd be at, and I always like to go over and talk to them. And it's just they're just super great people, and they love what they do, and and they're fans, and. Um, I'm just grateful that they took they took the love and care of this game over, and uh, I think people are really happy with how it ends. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy that it got an ending. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really appreciative to to Skybound for uh, picking it up and doing right by the fans to get this out and everything, and even you know getting some of the Telltale devs to come back and get a job for however long that needed to be. It's definitely like a testament to how much they really care about this series. And I read multiple yeah. articles about, you know, how much they hammered up to go ahead and get this project to actually come out. And it's actually kind of insane how much they really put into getting this. And it's just insane to think about. So, yeah, it's crazy. It is. But hopefully, hopefully um, I'm excited to see what Skybound may do with the future. They uh, they have the, you know, the creative freedom they may want to do with the walking dead as far as that goes you know hopefully yeah. they do uh do more games in the future i think as of right now they need to go ahead and you know just stop and think and say hey what we want to do as far as story for the walking dead and yeah. hopefully they do contact you if they do that <laughs> uh, i hope so oh my gosh i would just be so happy I'll be so happy to get to like hang out with lily more <laughs> <laughs> i just i really I don't know. It's 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 just interesting because when I think of like from the difference from doing The Sims and that kind of oh, yeah. was a therapeutic thing as well because I was playing an eight year old kid speaking a gibberish language, simlish, and just <laughs> making things up, but getting out my feelings and aggressions and getting to have temper tantrums and you know all that kind of stuff. But then there's the whole other side of the spectrum as Lily in Walking Dead, who's just she's just angry yeah. and she does doesn't give a shit like you know she i don't know but i appreciate i like how she is quiet and very deliberate in what she says and uh so that's a different kind of therapy if that even makes sense yeah it feels good it's like me (laughs) getting different emotions out that i can't really have in my day-to-day life yeah i can definitely see that how does like um like doing the emotions in voice acting as far as like crying being angry how does that work (laughs) <laughs> it's just, I mean, the only way, uh, it's such a weird question to answer because <laughs> you, all I can say is you have to be in the scene. You have to be so involved in that character. 
I mean, I've told this story before that um, when they were recording me for season one for um, the meat locker scene, mm -hmm. and they, I was, they literally were worried I was losing my mind because <laughs> I, how am I supposed to do that without going a little bit crazy? Yeah. I, I, you, I had to, I have no reference for that sort of a situation. And you just have to throw yourself into it completely, and 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 it, and it needs to be authentic and and feel and of course sound real. But you have to, in order for it to be authentic, you just have to really throw yourself into it and not mm -hmm. worry about anything, anyone watching you or anything like that. And the good thing about voice acting is most of the time you're in a dark little room by yourself and mm -hmm. no one sees how crazy <laughs> you look. So I think that's part of it too. It's very comfortable. It's always comfortable for me to record at Studio Jory with, and I, I, I just I don't know. It's it's weird to think about, but for me, I've always been an emotional person to a fault, and I kind of hate that in my day to day life. But mm -hmm. as far as being an actor, I think I I can I can put myself in those feelings and in that situation of the character, and. And it's hard for me to come out of it sometimes, but um, you know, I would come home from Lily sessions and I'd have to sleep the rest of the day because <laughs> emotionally it was exhausting. You know, she was yeah. so dark, and there was never anything lighthearted about her. Every other part I've played, I've been kind of silly, mm -hmm. and this was not. Like they tried to find bloopers. There's no bloopers of me <laughs> <laughs> because I'm too freaking serious when I'm Lily. It's it's you know. It's like I get too into it, I feel like, but not like I'm method acting, acting like Lily in the real world. <laughs> but just when I was when I would be recording, it's just you get back into that character. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just it's just I have to throw myself into something to get my but it happens with her because man, I wanted to do it again and so I was so mm -hmm. eager and excited, it just kind of came back to me. So I'm so happy. And I'm happy people are a lot nicer to me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is weird. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. like the community, like uh, pretty much, you know, with 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 season one, they were like a they're like a lot more angry at Lily compared oh, to to now. No, I'm getting like in London this weekend. I got like people wrote me little cards and drew me pictures. Someone painted a picture of like a portrait of me, <laughs> like you know. And I think what I realized is it's. It, you don't want to be uh, just someone who's not likable, like mm -hmm. not like a half villain, like someone that's just like, you know, bossy and a jerk. What what you want to be is the villain. Mm -hmm. You want to be the villain. Yes. I think people just like the villain better than a half villain. If that makes sense. It's yes. like, you know. So, yeah, but people are being uh, like so much nicer. And <laughs> now when they send me messages, they're like, I really hate Lily, but... You're the greatest. I'm like, <laughs> but now it's so much better because before it was just, I hate Lily. You know? Yeah. She's a bitch and bye. Like, not even bye, you know? <laughs> so it's so interesting how this has changed. It's just because I was nervous. I was like, everyone is going to hate me. They're never going to come to talk to me at conventions. <laughs> it was so bad before, but now it's like really nice. So. Yeah. I don't know. It's funny. It's so interesting. I love it, though. I love everybody that has really kept up with me all these years, wanting her to come back. And look, you guys, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of weird. Because, like, <laughs> Lily is completely mean, but you are the sweetest person I've ever met in my life. Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I mean, she, thank you. That's really sweet. <laughs> Um, I'm glad I'm not like her, and so, <laughs> that would be terrible, but yeah, it's crazy, it's fun, it's, that's why voice acting is, is great, because mm -hmm. you can do anything really, yes. you know? Alright, well that's all I pretty much have as far as the interview is concerned. Great! Would you do me the honors of, you know, saying something in Lily's voice for me? What would you, you like me to say? Um, Do you have a certain line you want me to say? Ooh, okay. Be sure to like and subscribe to Inferno Coon, or else Clementine gets it. That was so weird, but so cool at the same time. 
really? <laughs> All right, everyone. You heard it here. Do what Lily says. She's not a nice lady. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining me here in Nikki Rap. It's been a complete honor. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I'm really glad I got to be your first interview. That's so yes. cool. <laughs> it's, been, it's been really awesome. I think I did pretty well. Yeah, you did great. Good all right. questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's pretty much it as of right now. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. I'm Bye. Out. Bye.